This is our review of Willy's Wonderland, which I keep calling it Wally's Wonderland. And I need to Yo, me too. that. Why am I doing that? <laughs> Isn't that from a different movie? Is it? Isn't what? Wally's Wonderland from like vacation? Oh, shit. <laughs> I was I had made up in my head that I was calling it Wally because I've got a dog named Wally. Right. I Wally, I'm just Wally's World. Wally's World. Right. Well, yeah. I for some reason I keep mixing up Wally's World <laughs> and Willy's Wonderland. I can't believe how obvious that was and how long I've been thinking about it, but anyway, guys, Willy's Wonderland is about a man played by Nicolas Cage who has car trouble. And in order to get his car fixed and make his way out of the town, they ask him to clean up a place called Willie's Wonderland, which is essentially a Chuck E. Cheese of sorts, a family restaurant with animatronics. And the thing is that the animatronics kind of come to life and they're murderous. And it's Nick Cage versus these animatronic characters. And that's the movie. You didn't like it. I didn't think I'm you. so dis- okay. I'm so disappointed. I am I so disappointed. You. Yeah, I feel I feel you. Um, I know, I know what I signed up for. They have the premise of Nick Cage versus animatronics, and that is what the movie gives you. My problem is it gives you it by doing the absolute bare minimum, and I don't want that to sound like I don't think anyone involved in the film tried. I'm sure people tried. But, uh, I don't know. It's. I feel like you can't make that assumption when you don't know every single... Oh, sorry. I wasn't part. disagreeing with you. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't disagreeing with that. I, th- I was agreeing with the bare minimum part of it. Yeah, because I, I was wondering if there were maybe some budget restrictions, particularly when it comes to some of the fight and kill sequences, which looked like they were shot in a way to be able to edit around not having the ability to do certain things. And I just found it very, very frustrating. Yeah. For me, it's uh, Ian actually beat me to the punchline. I was going to bring up the banana splits movie uh, because the banana splits movie tried to do this exact same concept with the banana splits and in like a TV soundstage studio. And the big thing, there's a few big things for me in the sense that number one, I'd like Willie's a little more than the banana splits because the banana splits was on like a sci-fi budget And it had some real, real bad scenes of animation, fire included, where like someone's head's on fire and it just looks atrocious. So that one had way more issues on that side. But at least it tried to reboot the Banana Splits in a unique way, in a fun way. And it had a story and it had elements that kept driving and it had development where, well, Willy's Wonderland, like you said perfectly, you know what you signed up for but it's given to you in a package that doesn't imagine anything bigger than a poster. It's the poster in movie form and that's it. Yeah. Um, Again, I understand the high concept they were seizing on and it really could have done something, but I feel like even the coolest of the cool visuals of Nick Cage fighting animatronics, even if it looked like a million bucks and it looked great, it's only going to mean so much if you have absolutely no character development and a meaningful foundation to support it. And I did find Nick Cage's character completely inaccessible in that respect. I, there were some there were some interesting character details that I think served the pacing of the movie well. You, even though I, I somewhat don't even know what it amounts to. It's like the the, so, the soda he was drinking the whole time. I liked the changing of the shirts. I thought that was a cool element. But I, I know nothing about him. What drives him? Nothing uh, to give his, his choices in the movie any purpose or value. And then the kids, the kids were, were like fodder. <laughs> they... They were there to die. I'm sorry if that spoils something for you, but there's literally nothing else I could say about those characters. This is the most rinse and repeat kind of frustration for me as a movie watcher because Nick Cage's character is inaccessible because he doesn't have any lines. He's mute the entire film, and that is how he's written. They want him written to be the stoic badass. So literally, the only time he actually emotes is when he's playing pinball. And let me explain what happens in this movie. This is 90 minutes, basically, of Nick Cage repetitively killing one of the animatronics, 
His phone goes off. He takes a break. He chugs one of his sodas and he plays pinball. He does this throughout the movie because that's the only formula they know that works. And as Perry said, some kids get involved in for some reason, and they are just bottom of the barrel caricatures that have no development at all. And they are there to die. They don't have any scenes where you actually care about them. So you don't care that they die. You don't know why Nick Cage. Well, they try with one of them and it they does try. not work. It's awful. But then worst of all, you don't know why Nick Cage is doing what he's doing. You don't know why he's ignoring the kids because that's what he does at points. He blatantly ignores the kids, plays pinball while they die. He's supposed to be this like cryptid Sasquatch character. He even like in the press notes, it says that Nick Cage is playing this character in his head because he knows who he is, but he doesn't know how to convey that. So like he knows the character he's playing. The film doesn't know how to tell you the character he's playing. And they do that by these stupid little one-off gimmicks where he drinks soda sometimes and he likes playing pinball. But it matters not at all because nothing he does matters. Nothing the kids do matters. We don't care about the entire scenario. And thus, all the repetition just adds up to a whole bunch of bullshit. I was so mad because I should love this movie. I, I was I was pretty disappointed. How How low are you going with your score? Two out of five. You made me not like a movie where Nick Cage fights Chuck E. Cheese animatronic characters. And of course, they also are costumed actors. They they don't look oh. like animatronics. Like that again, that's the, the banana splits for me because my big thing with the banana splits is those people like the actors and costumes never look robotic, except this does it a little better because every actor is kind of doing the robot the whole time and they just overlay some mechanical sound effects and it makes it look like they're animatronic. So I'll, I'll give you my score. I'm going a little lower and I'm going with a one and a half out of five. Usually I make up those points on a really low score with some sort of a technical achievement that's undeniable, but this doesn't have it. I, I had a major problem with the fact that the animatronics were caught between being animatronics and looking like, you know, the, the people who dress up in, in costumes that I see in Times Square. It's a, it's a very awkward combination that doesn't work at all. And then on top of that, the sound effects weren't good. The, the mix overall was bad. And one of the biggest problems I had with the sound effect was that it lessened the intensity of the action. I think whenever someone landed a punch, it felt more like a weak thud. And I, I do think that has a lot to do with the, the sound effects and less so with other elements. But really, I, I can't really find a, a single thing to, to praise. If I, if I am to try to give you anything, it's that I do think that the the family-friendly restaurant vibe is a fun-looking setting for a horror movie. And for that reason, I hope maybe they get around to making Five Nights at Freddy's at some point or something of the sorts. But this right here takes that really cool high concept that sounded a lot of fun and essentially trashes it and makes it not worth watching at all, even if you are real eager to see Nick Cage kick the shit out of some animatronics. But it's, and all, the last thing I'll leave you with is it's not even the Nick Cage you want to see doing this. I think films sometimes mm -hmm. misuse the cage. They they go over the top when he should be more subdued. But Willy's Wonderland has the complete opposite effect because they subdue Nicolas Cage in a movie he should be giving insane monologues and having off-the-wall reactions to. So you've taken the wrong Cage into your wacky bonkers film that doesn't mean anything and only exists because, the last press note fact I'll tell you, this movie would not have gotten made unless Nicolas Cage signed on. He's the only reason this movie got made, and now we see why. Well then... <laughs> There it is. You know who we have to thank for this glowing review? You actually all should be shouting out Billy right now because this, this review is only coming your way courtesy of Billy. And Billy is supporting this review and making it happen so you don't have to watch the movie. I hope we caught you guys in time on that. But that right there is our review of Willy's Wonderland. <laughs> <laughs>